So welcome back to Don't Look Up, where we encourage you to look up. My name is Dr. Scott. This is Dr. Ted over here. And today we're talking about magnesium. Why do we need magnesium? Where do we get it from? And why is it so important? All right, Dr. Ted, so why is magnesium so important? What is it? What is it doing? Yeah, magnesium is a crucial mineral in the body. And what is important to remember about it, if you are a biochemistry nerd, you see in human biochemistry, right, that, for example, ATP production, the magnesium is required, right? So mm -hmm. it's required by over 300 enzymatic reactions in the body. And that's how important it is. So uh, we can use it to improve muscle function, for example, for blood glucose control, for blood pressure regulation, for the synthesis of protein, bone, and DNA. But for me, the thing that I remember, uh, of course, and it's always given in exams, is that it's the essential mineral for, for the production of energy, or ATP. What are the health benefits of magnesium? Why is it so important? Well, we can take a look at it in several uh, areas of the body, like for example, bone health, right? Uh, it aids in bone development and the maintenance of strong bones. So if, even for those with osteoporosis, you know, especially for those osteoporosis, they can actually benefit from magnesium supplementation. Heart health, right? Um, it helps support cardiovascular function, muscle function, you right. know, ATP, production, uh, ATP yeah. production, and then mental health alleviates symptoms of anxiety and improves sleep quality. Yeah. But the one that I actually like to use it for is at night, it helps your blood vessels relax, and therefore you feel relaxed, and it's easier to sleep. Right? Yeah, and magnesium is actually working on the GABA receptors yeah, as well. Yeah. It's actually making the GABA receptors more sensitive yeah. to GABA for it to bind. Yeah. And it's also blocking the glutamate receptors. Yeah. So glutamate is our excitatory neurotransmitter. So more of that, you're going to feel more wakeful, more ready to go. So if you can block the glutamate receptors mm. so you have less glutamate and you have more GABA, you're going to feel more relaxed too. Yeah, well, the, the way that I remember it in the cardiovascular system is in when I was rotating in OBGYN, right? If you have preeclampsia, eclampsia patients, <laughs> you actually, in eclamptic patients, you inject boluses of magnesium to uh, decrease the blood pressure, right? right? Blood and pressure. the blood pressure drops dramatically. And this can work for like hypertensive patients, right? Okay, uh, yeah. So that's, acute, yeah, that's how I, I remember it. And, even if I didn't know the exact mechanism then, as I do now, mm -hmm. you know, um, I would give it to my patients before. Like, it was just like, okay, this mineral for eclampsia. <laughs> <laughs> Two grand push. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, of course, the uh, other part that you can use it for, especially for diabetic patients, right? Uh, it aids in blood glucose control. All of my diabetic patients have supplementation of magnesium after measuring, of course, mm. right? And there is actually a correlation that diabetic patients uh, usually have low magnesium mm. levels. Yeah, no. So uh, we don't know if it's a chicken or the egg problem, right? Sure. But, well, hey, anything that can help, right? Maintain your blood, glu blood glucose when you're diabetic, it's... It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. What are some common symptoms of magnesium deficiency? Yeah, magnesium deficiency is generally uncommon, but when you're counting them, they, they are very protein, meaning they're very common. You don't even know that That's the they're thing, coming right? from. Yes, yeah. exactly. So it's yeah. loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, weakness, you know, just like, you know, when you just found out you're pregnant. <laughs> you Obviously. know, and then yeah. progressive symptoms. And I have had clients that have had this, it's like, um, you know, numbness, tingling, uh, muscle contractions, cramps, seizures, personality changes, uh, and abnormal heart rhythms. This explains and, so much. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, you know, many of them complain of numbness and tingling, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, more often than not, I actually, they're actually long-term diabetics too. Interesting, and yeah. there's already a compromise of their uh, small, smaller blood vessels, et cetera. So you don't know whether or not it's the compromised small blood vessels or magnesium deficiency. So you address both. Yeah, right? and then of course you have your vegans and vegetarians, which are likely getting less as a sources of magnesium <laughs> in general <laughs> as a result of the lack of bioavailability in a lot of the plants that we were discussing earlier yeah. and less of it just being in there overall yeah. Yeah. compared to animal sources. Right? Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, that's why I cannot, yeah, I myself, uh, you know, I take like three grams of magnesium nightly. You take more, you know, because you do it by a scoop. <laughs> <laughs> I think also it's important to realize that 
because the majority of Americans are magnesium deficient to some degree, mm. there are very common symptoms as you were describing, mm. like headaches, lack of good and getting good sleep, yeah. uh, personality changes see, even. Yeah. These are very common and we don't think about magnesium as Yeah, do we think about chronic fatigue syndrome? <laughs> we think about this is, a, this is an ambient deficiency. <laughs> <laughs> so in the, in, end, in the end, really it's important to do the simple things and think about the essential minerals we need, especially magnesium. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, and most people don't want to hear this, is that, you know, if you want to relieve a lot of your symptoms, have a good night's rest. And one of the things that you can do to have a good night's rest is to exercise. <laughs> so you, you could see how the progression of that is. And that's why I take uh, my magnesium at night. Right, right. Uh, right. because it relaxes you as you go to sleep, so it helps in your sleep induction. Yeah, right? yeah. Ted, how much magnesium does someone need on a daily basis? Usually people who are younger, who eat an omnivorous diet, don't need anything because you can get most of your magnesium from food. However, you know, uh, on the average, uh, men should have about uh, 410 uh, milligrams. Uh, range is 400 to uh, 420, right? And uh, adult women should be around 310, uh, 310 to 320 per yeah. day. Yeah, I wonder yeah. again if this is like your RDA, like it's the minimal yeah, yeah. that you need if you have more magnesium, that's probably better. So the best right. thing is to measure your magnesium levels. Yes. And yeah, there are two ways of measuring yes. magnesium levels, right? One is serum magnesium, which is useless because it's what's traveling in the blood serum. It should be the intracellular magnesium. So they lyse the RBC or the red blood cell and measure the uh, content of magnesium there because this, uh, magnesium is actually being used by the body or by the cell. Right, right? so the best way so, to look is, is is actually in the cell itself. Yes, yes. To understand yes. how much magnesium you yes. may or may not have. Yeah, and uh, some labs would actually would do magnesium with a lower, subs with a subscript I, and that means intracellular magnesium. Mm. Yeah, right? yeah. Otherwise, it's serum magnesium, which is useless to you. Okay. Right? But if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, right, you may need higher uh, amounts, and you know, you can be tested as to how much magnesium you would need, and they would have charts and so on, right? The interesting thing is that the risk of having too much magnesium it's actually pretty similar to having too little in some ways, right? Yeah. Some of the symptoms can be similar, if I'm not mistaken. Well, the... <laughs> That's what happens in the preeclamptic wards, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, the most uh, prominent one that I have, if I take too much magnesium, is diarrhea. Yes. So yeah. if I am going to, say, recommend magnesium even just at 200 milligrams a day, which is low, right? Because you have to add the food intake. Or for those with severe deficiency, 200 milligrams three times a day, they start developing diarrhea. So what I do is I introduce the breakfast first, after breakfast or with breakfast, and then if they can tolerate that, then after lunch, you know, and, and go with that for a while, and after dinner, go with that for a while, mm -hmm. and then before bedtime. And the reason I do that is you don't want to have diarrhea while you sleep. <laughs> you know, it's not a good way to wake up. It's nasty. Yeah. If you wake up, <laughs> the bed may not be happy with you. Okay. What are some of the major sources of magnesium that we get in our diet overall? Yes, uh, leafy green vegetables, um, spinach, kale, Swiss chard, you know, um, these are usually dark leaves. For me, when I see dark, uh, dark leafy vegetables like magnesium or iron, right? Iron so, too, yeah, I feel yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nuts and seeds like almonds, cashews, pumpkin seeds, uh, whole grains, uh, which I am not a fan of, like quinoa, uh, whole wheat bread, you know, I, I don't take this. That's not the greatest source yeah. of uh, uh, yeah. Legumes, again, which I don't take, right? Yeah. Black beans, lentils, chickpeas, uh, you know, I know that there are lobbies out there for this, please don't shoot me, <laughs> uh, it's just my personal <laughs> preference because I'm evolutionarily based and eater. And your clinical preference? But that's okay. Mine too. Um, and fruits yeah. like bananas and avocados. Yeah, they right? have a lot of magnesium. Yeah. And there's also organ meats too. Organ meats have a lot of magnesium. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you cannot, um, if you cannot take organ meats, take the glandular capsules. Right. There yeah. are glandulars out there that have all of these, you know, different organs in them. Right. Or cook French. You know, they they. Uh, Do some pate. Uh, they, yeah. Yeah, I, I know that. I can never really stand liver pate when I was a kid, but there's are other you, ways to get liver now. Are, are you kidding me? I love liver pate. So <laughs> another source of magnesium would be potentially organ meats or organ yes, supplementation yes, as well. Yes, uh, mm. Because we don't think, here in this country at least, we don't think of eating the organ right. meats, right? Mm. But in other parts of the world, they actually, um, you know, uh, cook them. 
Right. Well, we also know that in the wild, what animals will go to first when they're eating their prey yeah. is the organs, right? Yeah. That's, that's the most yeah. prized yeah. part of yeah. the actual animal. Yeah, I, it, you know, um, one of the things that I remember growing up was actually having pig's brain omelette. You know? oh, wow, that's intense. Okay. <laughs> I, in, in and a, look at the result. I, looking great. Like, look at that brain of yours. Um, in the front of my house a couple months ago, uh, a hawk mm. caught a bunny mm -hmm. and just annihilated this bunny mm. right in front of all my children. <laughs> but it was beautiful to watch because all this hawk did was just take the organs, mm. eat them, mm. and leave. That's all yeah. he did. Yeah. And you know, not, no muscle fibers. All the all the innards, like the small intestine, mm -hmm. and everything else was perfectly intact. Mm -hmm. So I was mopping up this half-eaten animal and go, oh, this this is what they eat, the organs. I would like to do the same, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> we typically like to cook for food. It's okay. We're not really set up for the whole raw organ yeah. eating thing. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Ted, there's many different types of magnesium out there in the market. Mm -hmm. I guess the first question is, do we want our patients to poop or do we want them to not <laughs> poop as much? You mean over poop. Over poop. <laughs> over poop with magnesium. So there's a couple different types of magnesium that are specifically for pooping, right? There's magnesium citrate mm -hmm. and magnesium oxide. Mm -hmm. Do you have a preference between those two? For I, I actually, you know, um, there's also a computation for elemental magnesium, mm. right? Mm. And you, there's a formula for uh, the computation for those. So it depends on, because magnesium will become unbound anyway, mm -hmm. right? And, and become magnesium that's, right, that's uh, utilized exactly, by the yeah. body. Yeah. And all of these are just, uh, you know, uh, bound to, to it for stability purposes or addition of an amino acid like magnesium taurate, you know. Or glycinate. Uh, glycinate, yeah, right? yeah. 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 So for me, my choice of magnesium is actually more of a mixed type, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, like I take a mix of uh, uh, glycinate and threonate and taurate. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. That's because uh, my uh, professor before in nutritional medicine, uh, he's Dutch, but you know he taught in Paris for a while, and he took magnesium taurate. He said because we have a very low intake of taurine, and mm -hmm. it has stuck with me. Mm -hmm. So, and the uh, three and eight, of course, is the fastest absorbed. Right. So right. I just put the, in those three and stop thinking about it. Yeah. But if you are going to be a stickler for things, then you know the first thing that you should do is take a look at the different forms of magnesium. Look it up, and then calculate for the uh, elemental magnesium that uh, you're taking. Right. It's right. the same as when you take calcium supplements. There's an amount of elemental calcium, and this is the kind of uh, computation that's available out there. Uh, on the internet, and you can just uh, look at them. Yeah, and then I know magnesium threonate, which you mentioned, and you take at night, and I take that one mm -hmm. too. I know it has the highest blood-brain barrier permeability, mm -hmm. so it gets across into the brain mm -hmm. and gives you the highest levels of magnesium mm -hmm. in your brain. So yeah, that's why look it's at the result. Good. I know, I know. <laughs> At least for you, I'm not one in a billion, but that's okay. Uh, there's also magnesium malate, mm -hmm. uh, and there's also you know you talk about magnesium. Uh, glycinate as well. Right, yeah. And so the ma magnesium glycinate is the one that's attached to glycine. Yeah. And then glycine is also an, an amino acid that helps calm down the brain too. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, glycine is uh, one of the most abundant amino acids in the body. So, you know, um, you're rarely repleted, right? But it's a very good, um, it, the, the, that binding is also quicker. Right, for, yeah. because glycine is a simple amino acid. And I guess it's a less of a laxative effect typically yeah. for the glycinate yeah. compared to some of the others. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, as an individual, you really have to play around with the right magnesium mm -hmm. for you, but mm -hmm. in general, at least with my patients, the oxide and citrate are more for people having regular bowel movements. Mm -hmm. And the other ones, the glycinate, the three and eight, uh, the taurate, mm -hmm. these are one, ones are more focused on repletion of your elemental magnesium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, enhancements of sleep. Yeah, and right? sleep as well. Yeah. yeah. You take it, at, you know, as I said, I take about three grams a night and, you know, helps in relaxation. Three, three grams. Three grams. Three grams. Okay. Yeah. Can magnesium cause itchy skin? It may, all right, uh, especially for sensitive individuals who are using magnesium loaded creams and lotions for their body. And what can happen there is that, you know, since uh, they often use magnesium chloride and that's right. a salt, you know, especially when you just shave, right? And you put it in there, it can get itchy. Is, right? is it the Home uh, Alone thing, you know, like, the, <laughs> like you put some shaving cream? Yeah, shaving cream. but generally oral magnesium doesn't cause this unless it's extremely high dose, right? right? right. But for extremely high doses, before you notice the, the, uh, the itchy skin, you're actually 
in the toilet already. Yes. Pooping. Yes, or very, very tired, <laughs> yeah, at least. Yeah. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Don't Look Up, where we encourage you to look up. A space for real conversations about health, powered by your curiosity, and grounded as well as founded in science. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.